Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be filming about what resources I use in medical school uh, for note taking and how I study using OneNote, um, Anki, uh, a combination of Pomodoro or Forest to um, stay on top of my time. So the kinds of resources that I use really depend on the kinds of exams that I'm studying for. So what I do is that before the lecture, so the night before, um, I would look through the PowerPoint slides that my professors uploaded, um, download that onto OneNote, and then take notes on the side margins based on that PowerPoint slides. And I'm going to show you guys how I actually take notes based on those slides. Uh, what I do is that the night before, let's say for example, I'm looking through this lecture over here. So I'll look through the slides on here and I'll take my own notes um, on this margin. Um, when I'm taking notes, what I do is that I look at different terms that are on the slide and then I use uh, the first aid book to help me kind of understand terms better. So if I'm looking at proto-oncogenes, what I do is that I go into um, the USMLE first aid book, um, I look up the terms that I want to know about so in this case, if I'm looking at proto-oncogenes, um, this is going to tell me a little bit more about what they are. Or if I want to know more about tumor suppressor genes right here, um, I'll use the first aid book to find out where tumor suppressor genes are. So reading a little bit about this gives me a general idea and a very brief overview of what tumor suppressor genes are. So in my notes over here, um, I would understand that tumor suppressor genes prevent G1 to S phase movement. So now let's say that I'm pre-reading through my notes and there are slides that I can't find um, either in first state and that I can't understand even using Google. What I would do is I would actually write down the question right beside the slide and this is the night before. So I would write down something like what does this mean unilateral versus bilateral. So by highlighting it, what it does is that in class, especially during days where we're in lectures from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., I usually tend to lose focus throughout the day. Um, just because it's really hard to stay focused in lecture all throughout. So by highlighting these key terms and key phrases, what it does is that it makes me focus and I make sure that I actually listen to this slide. And so once I'm in lecture, all I do is I add notes to what I've already written notes on. And then on the weekend, what I do is that I would go through my lecture notes and take one uh, very detailed set of notes. So let me show you guys what that actually looks like. So now the way I take notes is that rather than um, copy everything straight from my PowerPoint slides, what I would do is I would try to practice a little bit of active recall. So if I looked at a bold header on my um, professor's lecture slides, what I would do is I would try and write my own definition for it without looking and compare that to the definition on the slides. Um, the way I also color coded my notes is that I use the first aid book for the USMLE to write everything in red, so oftentimes this happened to be the most important points that my lecturers would also highlight, so that was perfect because um, the book really helped me formulate my own notes. Everything that I wrote down in black was um, what my profs had covered on their lecture slides. So I preferred to write down my own notes just because it let me actually draw figures anytime I needed to. So for example, if I'm looking at the action potential for the pacemaker cells, I was able to color code and draw each of the different phases and label them and write my own notes for them. 
I also found it really useful when it came to um, drawing uh, drawing the QRS waves or drawing um, the ECG recordings. I think this was really useful then, um, even during uh, the embryological parts of um, cardiology. I was able to draw and label them, so I preferred I just preferred being able to write my own notes. And um, this was my first book that I wrote notes in and I will just show you guys an example of the same thing on this. So again, I really um, got a chance to draw the figures that I wanted to um, and that's why I preferred writing out my notes. However, if you prefer actually um, being able to find things more easily, I would definitely recommend typing them up online and color coding them according to um, maybe just using one or two colors actually rather than confusing yourself with multiple colors so i either stuck with black and red or um once i ran out of black ink i just used blue instead so there were always just two colors that i was using um and so one of the um one of the drawbacks for this was that, of course, it doesn't let you actually find things. Um, you have to actually know where they are, and I kind of preferred that because it made me think a little about exactly where um, I wrote those notes, and so it helped me with learning. So yeah, those are all of my notes. So now I've gone through how I actually pre-read for my notes before the lecture, I've gone through how I take notes on OneNote during my lecture, and I've also gone through how I write my notes in my notebook um, after the lecture. I also want to talk a little bit about how I study for my actual exams. One way that I recommend studying for medicine is try to visualize a patient coming to you with the particular condition that you're studying about. And so what I mean by that is, let's say you're learning about atrial fibrillation. So try and visualize a patient coming into your clinic or into the emergency department with AFib. What would that present as and what would it look like? Try and visualize the ECG recording, um, how the P wave would be absent or how there would be more QRS complexes. And lastly, try and think of the treatment that you'd prescribe for this patient. So in this case, it would probably be an antiarrhythmic to correct for the arrhythmia of the patient's heart, or it would be something like an anticoagulant. So I also use an app called Forest or Pomodoro. So what those do is that while I'm actually studying or while I'm writing my notes, um, I tend to make a schedule. So let's say I put in my schedule 9 to 10 a.m. that I would cover um, the first chapter of um, of tumor pathology for example uh, what I do is that I set um, I use Pomodoro and I make sure that I, for the first 50 minutes that I'm studying I have no distractions and then for 10 minutes I take a break And lastly, when it comes time to reviewing, I think the most important thing is using the learning objectives from the lectures that are listed. So for example, um, I'm going to show you guys what that looks like. So now let's say I'm studying about um, tumor definitions and tumor nomenclature. The first learning objective listed on here is to be able to define neoplasia, hyperplasia, anaplasia, and tumor differentiation. So when I'm studying, what I would do is I would make sure that I'm able to list off the definitions for these four terms, and um, I would do this not by looking at my notes, but trying to recall it from my own memory. So in addition to definition-based questions, I would also recommend um, if you happen to have a copy of UWorld questions, um, I found that those question banks were useful, but only to a certain extent. A lot of the material we actually haven't covered because we've just finished um, or we're almost wrapping up our first year of medical school and I know a lot of it we cover in our second year. So I would only recommend UWorld if you're interested in getting more questions. So in terms of Anki, I found that using pre-made decks has really helped me. This is a deck that I downloaded from Reddit and I'm gonna um, put a link to that in the description box below. So um, the only things that we've really covered, for example, if I look into cardiovascular pharmacology, um, we haven't covered this. Let me find a question that maybe we have. So once the antiarrhythmics should have a high um, binding affinity for the sodium channel. So we learned about this. Innermost layer of the arterial wall should be the tunica intima. 
so that's something that we learned. Um, so I kind of use this only when I have actually covered the concepts in class. I don't use them otherwise because I find that this um, these decks tend to be very, very um, in-depth and they are, of course, for studying for when you're actually writing the USMLE, which I'm not doing that yet. So I would recommend using them only as a um, last resort when you have run out of everything else to review or test yourself with. I hope that this video was really helpful and thank you guys very much for watching.